um, one of the things that we were talking about is business model, right? And so you guys have built really two business models that have had balances against each other, but also had sometimes three companies under the same umbrella, right? I mean, the construction business, the, the, the rental business, and then the, then the wholesale side. Talk to, talk to us how you, how you balance that out. How do you, how do you decide which, which, uh, which dog to feed? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think for us, it's, it's, a, it's obviously a cash position. You know, I think it's, it's how many deals you got coming in that month. Do you feel like, you know, it's, it's just, um, you know, you're looking at the balance of things of how many deals have we done this month, the cash flow, what's your construction, did you, did you just take on three or four rehabs and do you maybe have the capital but you don't have the resources to turn this thing and timing of year for rentals and flips is important. Like yep. I've always said that this is, we're about to get in the best time to buy flips uh, and, and quite frankly the rentals that are big construction ones is like December is like mm. the best time. It's dead, yeah. It's, it's dead and then you've got three months. Mm -hmm. And then you're putting those things on the market, whether it's rental or flipping. Yeah. So there's yeah. there is a lot I feel like that mm -hmm. goes into that. Yeah, yeah I've, I mean, for us, I've even noticed a little with our the, the properties that we've we've sent out that are good flips. Like they've sat longer because I just think people that are normally used to flipping are waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, they're probably finishing up projects that they've you know they're probably sitting on projects right now. Yep. You know that they bought in May, mm -hmm. um, and so and then it goes back to like. I know for us, like that's a good acquisitions time is mm -hmm. in December because and start those renovations because then it gets everything ready to go in in, in the springtime. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I mean having a balance, you're There's always no you're balance. always gonna there is none. I mean you're gonna look back, you're gonna look back five years from now and be like, man, I wish I bought more houses. Yeah. And you're like, well, and you're like, well, no, because we yeah. have we have you know we have people to you know we have mouths to feed too. Yep. So mouths to feed, investors keep happy. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I mean, you know, it's this ever riding theme that we have on the show here is how how money um, and how we do um, how we take care of it, how we develop it, how we create it, how we how we build it, how that how taking the pressure of money away from the day to day to make better long-term decisions or how, how you run your business has been one of the themes we've been talking about reoccurring. I've seen this happen over and over and over that, that a lot of times you grow a business too fast, right? Like I, the, I've had two businesses that have gone from zero to two, to two and three million dollars in less than two years. And I'm telling you, that's too fast because the talent can't keep up with the mm -hmm. growth. And when you, when, and, or you're, you don't have enough funding to hire enough, the talent to take care of the, 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 the work to be done. And that, I think that's what we all, one of the reasons we started this whole podcast, this whole business, and, and why you guys are helping people you know, find new, new uh, vehicles to invest in is because if you've got that reoccurring revenue, you've got that asset that's appreciating, if you've got something that's creating cash flow, and you take the pressure of your day-to-day -day life off of what you need to, to, to take care of your family, to win and to survive, to thrive even, you you can make better long term decisions with your money. Is yes, that fair? Absolutely true. And so so as you guys have built and you've got those new reserves and you've got those as you as you become bigger, do you feel like the pressure gets easier or worse? <laughs> you know, I, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big the team is, how little the team is. Yeah. I think when God has made you a certain way, uh -huh. you know, you're just you're just built to you know to succeed. Uh -huh. And so it's that self-motivation that is, you know, I think that self-motivation helps you when things get tough, you uh -huh. know. I think that's probably most important is that when you're self-motivated, when things get tough, you find your way, you find your way out of, you know, you find your way out of the ditch a little bit quicker. I think you're, I think you're always going to put pressure on yourself. I, I don't know that you, I think that's just any entrepreneur that does this, I think just in some ways thrives on it, you yeah. know. You do you think that we hunger for it a little? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, when I think that's when well, we, jo we joke well, around. I've had a lot of deep conversations. When, when, when you get when you get comfortable and everything's moving, like you would think, okay, if you let's just imagine you had a company that's just you, you're no you're out of the day to day and you're like then you're like, well, that's this so, is fun. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna challenge the whole God has built me for this thing that doesn't <laughs> just throw out here. So <laughs> uh, I'm not talking about. I'm teasing. I'm joking. <laughs> I, I think the risk tolerance. Is is a muscle that you guys have built up and and have learned to, the confidence that you can recover. I think that the only way you go through that is to go through a couple winners, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've lost everything uh, once 
and half of everything uh, um, once and knowing that you can recover from it and that you can build that back up is a muscle that, you know, I'm landing on my feet. If you, 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 now, you don't want to do it again, right? Um, but I do think there is that, like, when I talk to my friends about some of the stuff that I'm doing, it, it's the risk. You can see the look in their eyes, like, you know, especially the one that's an accountant that works for a large company. I mean, you know, he's, they're grinding. They're going to grind. That's always going to be their mode. That's his mode. I think your mode is different. But I do also think that Dustin, uh, to a point, is like there's, there's, there's some of that where the comfort ratio. But I do feel like you guys are getting comfortable with bigger decimal points than you used to be. Mm -hmm. Fair? Well, he has a higher tolerance than I <laughs> of, of, of pain. Uh, yeah. 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 No, I, I, I think that will always do I mean, everybody's going to have different <laughs> levels of it. But, but yeah, I, 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 think you're, I think you're absolutely right. I think going through... A tough time or a different time and knowing that you can come out of it definitely does help you on the next venture where it, where maybe it is a little bit more risk or, or it's not even about risk it's just about commitment like you know a big project and it gives you a little bit more confidence that we can get through it and if we don't we'll, we'll this this relationship with risk is a is a pervasive theme that i see when we're working with people all you know big businesses small businesses um, the different people in organizations, right? Um, I, I, I work in a highly technical uh, environment, right? I mean, a lot of our people are used to having all the information, used to knowing everything about something. And so going into things where we're going to test and then and, and validate and then test and validate and test and validate and having a 90-day plan, the FARS plan that you're going to have a plan out, is one of those things that's hard to do. But it's almost like when you're venturing in the way of the startup on certain things, where you don't have market validation that this is going to win, that's a different, it, it, it's, it's, you see how people can play with their risk. And I just think it's a very interesting conversation to have when you guys have, like every time I talk to real estate, even about other, other business owners, to other business owners, and I talk uh, and, and mention real estate, you know, everybody gets that predetermined look on their face. Do you guys see that? Like, like uh, the, the risk of real estate? Uh, I don't know if I see that. I, I think I see, man, I, I think the words I hear is, um, I, I'd love to get involved in that, but mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't know how. Mm -hmm. They don't really understand what the risk is. Right. They just see other people are doing it. They've, you know, they've heard friends talk about it or country club members talk about it. And mm -hmm. they're like, man, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. You know, that sounds great. I want to do that. But then they don't really know what they don't know. Right. So, and they don't realize the level of risk that a lot of people have taken on to, to get where they're at. And, I, and everything, I agree with Dustin. I think a lot of the guys that, that get into it to, that are in real estate, is it risk? I guess it's not really a risky business. It's pretty calculated. You kind of know if you know what you're doing. I think the guys that, that really lose big or in real estate or maybe even just lose on a, a flip, mm -hmm. you know, where they lost 20 grand, are the people that didn't realize there was a risk. Yeah. Right? They, yeah. Didn't, they, they thought it was a no-brainer, no -brainer. and all of a sudden they, they lost money. The guys who... It does not, you know, we'll look at a deal. Like worst case scenario, we break even. Worst case scenario, we lose 10 grand. And you're okay with that, yeah. knowing that the upside could be 30, 40, or, or depending well, on the project. Yeah, the, well, there is, you said it, right? There is risk. You know, mm -hmm. that is, that like, no matter how smart you are, there is a downside, right? I mean, there's like, a, um, so I think that's a valid point. And I think one of the other things, too, is like, um, uh, and this is a theme that we have on the show, uh, Will, it's like, this idea there is such thing as a passive income or a passive investment or a passive, you know, I, it just, it's such a fallacy. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, yeah. if it's your money, you're not passively involved, right? right? And, and so you have to, like, I, and, and that was my first foray when we had our first six rentals. You know, I thought it was going to be passive. I thought I could, I could just cash the checks. I didn't think I'd have to deal with the tenants. I didn't think I'd have to deal with the toilets. I didn't think I'd have to do, you know, I didn't expect to be dr driving in a bad part of town to go get rent at 600 bucks a pop on a duplex. And, and you know, within the first six months, a guy who I had managing the properties flaked out on me. I had to try to find another one. That guy flaked out. And, and so I went into it not thinking there was any risk and that it was passive. Mm -hmm. what, what do you guys think about that whole passive concept? Buying real estate is a business, mm -hmm. and any business isn't, I mean, most businesses aren't passive, mm -hmm. and so you have to be involved. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, you know, we had, we, we did a little rip on that earlier in our mm -hmm. podcast, mm -hmm. like the difference between, you know, passive and, mm -hmm. you know, what turnkey really is. Right. And, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and so, shirts made up for that. <laughs> there's no such thing. Yeah. 
there's no such thing. I, I, I would agree. I think it's, um, you know, we, we, we obviously got some private money lenders out there. It's probably about mm -hmm. as passive yeah. as, as you can get. But at, at the end of the day, that's only passive as long as everything's working, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, even whether it's turnkey or in, in these rental business, I mean, you're just going to have, that's part of the business you're going to have. Things that pop up. Yeah, I think the, 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 the concept of passive is I'm going to beat on the, the financial services industry again. It's like this whole idea that you could not think about your money mm -hmm. and that, that, that you could leave it to somebody else to passively do stuff with. Well, yeah, that's fine if you're willing to wait 30 to 40 years before you retire, right? I think that's this concept. Well, I think, I think the returns. Yeah. The returns result in how passive your investment mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So you want to invest in Wall Street. Yep. You're going to have years where things are good and have years, a lot of years where things are, are not good. At all. And so in real estate, if you, you know, yeah, how passive do you want it to be? Because the more passive it becomes, the less return you're going to get. Mm -hmm. The more involved you want to get, the more the return. The more the return. And I would argue that's the same in any business, right? It's like if you, if you, if you, if you pay if someone to run it mm -hmm. and they're half as good as you are, they're going to be expensive, right? Mm -hmm. And if and then therefore you're going to get less of a return. If you run that business yourself, then you're going to have to actively be involved, and therefore the return can be greater. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just the this this idea of that the, a lot of what we see on social media in this in this real estate business, and a lot of what I see some of the the talking heads, you know, uh, putting out there, and really what we're trying to dispel is like that 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 it's it's easy. I would argue that it is simple. It's not easy, right? Mm -hmm. You got to work it. You got to work the system. Mm -hmm. There is risk. There are there are loss to be taken. But you guys have made a hell of a living and built really good businesses that are providing a lot of um, a, a good. Uh, abundance for the people that work in them, and that's really that's half the battle, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's being you know when you first get into this too, it's about being you know people want to go in and just either knock it out of the park or take on that. I mean, I mean, we Fountain Square, which is a big area here, Bay Hendricks site. They want to take those projects on like their first rehab, you know. And Dustin's been through some of those, and we've been through some of those, but. And you know what I'm saying? If you get hurt, if you get hit hard, like right now, we could take a, a thirty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar lick. You wouldn't feel good. And none of us want to do it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. It doesn't. You just you, you rebound because our business is flowing and, and you got different streams. But you take that flip first. Oh, flip one or two. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts. You're yeah. out of the business. You're yeah. out of the business. Yeah, and I, and I think that's part of that is like I I I would one of the things I would want our 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 viewers know we've we've um, we've done this now we're in two ventures right now Greg and I and and we are you know, just turning the corner on one and still losing on the other right and it and part of that is like what was it, what is that education worth did you get the most out of that education if you're 50 grand into something did you get 50 grand worth of education Right. I mean, uh, when we, when, and what I mean by that, when we start our first dot, dot com, we started in in two thousand uh, one to two thousand two. We raised two million dollars. We made every mistake in the book, every stupid mistake in the book. It was a world class education. I mean, I can't tell you how much, how many times that that the losses of that have paid dividends for me, my clients. You know, just all the things that, that you get out of that. I think there is something to be said for those hurts and making them mean something for you. I mean, your spring, what we were talking about in the spring, right? Like, you know you can go through it. You, you, you bet on yourself. You went through all those times. I mean, now you know, right? Yeah. You, you weren't seeking. The, there was less meaning being uh, sought when the business is making money, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easier to talk about. It's, it's easier to talk about. You're like, I don't necessarily know what my why is, but we're throwing off cash, so it's all good. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's something to be said for that, right? Things going to downturn up. What's my why? What's my why? What's my why? Yeah, we we're, we start soul seeking when we're when we're, right. we have a thirty thousand dollar hit, right? So so I think there's the part of the the most powerful question and. That I a lot of times I get brought in when somebody's had one of those hits when they've had one like we're, we're, we're I'm working with a company right now that that was going to market a certain way and realized that, that what their way was going is not working and they've really they really realized that yeah man we have five different divisions that are going through five different go to markets and everybody is doing it differently mm -hmm. and and they had they they turned over one of their their VPs of sales and marketing and and we're we're going back to the basis and I'm telling you this is a seven eight million dollar business 
and they don't they don't have one common ideal client profile. They don't know who their ideal customer is, and and it's been been in business thirty years. So so there is always time to go through the process of this learning to have the business evolve and get to the next level. And I think that's one of what well, all I'm saying is when you go through the herps, make it mean something meaningful. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and that that just that's kind of whether it's a thirty thousand dollar hit or you know the first one we had, which was over two and a half million, it was a big one. But but I I, I would we have spawned probably eight different businesses out of that business that have spawned because of the learning that of the people that were in there. Um, five of the key executives that were there went out to start probably seven, eight other businesses. And I see that happen a lot. Would you guys, have you seen that happen? I mean, quite honestly, I've, I mean, I'm real, I mean, I'm a fairly new entrepreneur, mm-hmm. so I haven't been around as long as you have. So, um, and we're in, and really like you, when you get into Great. a business, you kind of keep your, you kind of keep your eyes set on like the people around you that are in your similar business. And mm-hmm. honestly, like our business, our, a lot of people in our business haven't had the experience downturn yet. Mm-hmm. So no, the answer for me really is no. Mm-hmm. And and so it'll be interesting when the downturn turn hits is who's still mm-hmm. who's still around. Mm-hmm. And um, you and you kind of pay attention to that too when businesses take a dive. Like who's still out there? Yep. You know who's still around? Mm-hmm. And um, so no, I mean yes and no, but n- mostly no. I haven't really seen somebody really take a a massive hit and and and. Just be done. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Will? Yeah, there's one guy in this market that I kind of think about is, you know, he was predominantly, when I first started, you know, five, six years ago, he was heavy on the, um, you know, doing all, bu- buying everything uh, through the banks and mm-hmm. through short sales. And mm-hmm. um, and that's where all the, I mean, you didn't have to do direct marketing. Mm-hmm. You didn't have to do all these things. And and he, I, I saw him slowly fade out. Like when he was first in it, he was wholesaling a lot, mm-hmm. and he was deal after deal after deal. Mm-hmm. Man, this guy's killing it! Like, where does he mm-hmm. get all these deals? And mm-hmm. and he was really good at it. He had a system down for it. Mm-hmm. And then the inventory shrank, you mm-hmm. know. And now, luckily for him, he was kind of he, he you know he wasn't old, but he was he was on his way out and mm-hmm. done well. And and so, but I, what I fear is I don't know if it's fear, but you got to be cautious. Is you know we're heavy, we're predominantly heavily in the wholesaling deal. Mm-hmm. What what's wholesaling look like mm-hmm. when the when the MLS mm-hmm. deals start to come back on when the banks start yeah, getting more in? That, yeah. We've never experienced it on on that yeah. mm-hmm. being able to adjust on that, mm-hmm. and so I I think I've seen it happen. I think you hear a lot of guys who had to re-implement and do and start doing direct mail and, mm-hmm. and, and dealing with consumers. These guys were all over the internet dealing with agents, and it's a whole different thing to find deals now. They had to go out and knock mm-hmm. on a door. You know, I think that was. It, you know, so different ball game. Different, different ball game. Mm-hmm. So yeah. You know, there was there, there's there's a gentleman that we both know that um, was heavily and just heavily involved in turnkey, mm-hmm. and um, and through just through a bunch of different reasons um, that that business went away, but um, he made his way he made his way back in a different just a, through a different model. Mm-hmm. And so, and he's written, and they're doing very well right now. Mm-hmm. So I think that's one of the ways, to your point about, um, you know, getting us through the wholesale cycle is when it does potentially change, um, getting back to the way we were doing business uh, before, you know, we jumped into the wholesale business and it was buying property left the MLS and, and doing more turnkeys and, and things like that. So our market will change and, and it's getting back to those you know, to the, that way of business, and and so I think I think we'll be fine. It's mm-hmm. just you know we don't know we don't know. Yeah, I, I I think the one thing that you guys are doing um, both consistently well is you're you're you built a model that has a repeat customer, and what I mean by that is like because you're helping because you're leaving money on the table for the investors that you work with to make money, you're you're getting them to repeat and do it again. And, and when they build that aptitude, like I think the uh, I joke that one of the most powerful things Dustin ever said to me is like, let's 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 work on building you a portfolio, right? And one and that phrase there changed the mindset from me thinking of toilets uh, and tenants and trash, right, to having a portfolio that worked for me, seeing the seeing a portfolio as a, a, new, a new business another annuity stream, right? And then realizing that I would have to take care of it like a business, but but I, w- but I could build it as part of uh, a wealth me- mechanism. And I think that that is the mindset of the people that you guys are attracting. We all know winter is coming, right? I mean, we all know that there's a downturn coming. 
But it doesn't mean the vehicle that you guys have created will, is going to go away. Yeah. It, it doesn't. It just means that you're buying lower and you're and you're finding different exits. And I think that's part of what um, what I, that we're trying to demystify about what you guys do. It's like there is this, this there is this mystique out there from people who aren't in it that think it's a bunch of headache and a lot of work. And it is a lot of work. But but the headaches are commiserate with the returns. And, and and the time and effort, if you get it large enough, I do think you have to get your portfolio to a certain size. Five or six is a pain in the butt, but 10 to 15 where you have somebody being able to take mm -hmm. care of it is a totally different game, right? And I, and But watching what you guys have done, it's like the time and effort is commiserate with what you're trying to do. I think that's part of what you're demystifying about. The, is it, when somebody is looking to create alternative income streams from their business, m most of our people that are, are following us probably run their own business, right? And they have their, they've got something they're trying to take care of, but having all your eggs in that one basket and not protecting for the, uh, yourself is part of the risk that a lot of entrepreneurs live with daily that we're trying to help leverage against. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. I think we live by the motto we, we, we teach. I mean, our, our wholesale and flipping business and Dustin's flipping and, you know, developing uh, businesses is, is our job, just like if you're a doctor, an attorney, or anything else. And I think, you know, building our portfolio, we, you know, we're living it. Like, you know, like, it, it, that's the thing. Like, when investors come to us, it's like, you're using a property manager that I personally use. Mm -hmm. You're using a construction team that I personally, we don't have all that in-house. And I think that's one of the benefits with us is we don't have it. But we, we don't have property management in house. But we here's our here's our yeah. here's here's yeah. here's our different people. And yeah. I think you gotta live it. You gotta live it and feel the pain a little bit of what your investors are feeling too. And when you gotta, if, if a property manager is not doing a good job, I'm gonna know that before they do, or at the same time they right. do. And and you make adjustments because you're you're living in their world. If you're buying something off of somebody that doesn't hold rentals for themselves, yeah. right? And there's a lot of guys. I mean, I know a lot of guys who provide a lot of properties when you, when you find out that they don't even have rentals. They don't nothing. They don't even know it. So it's yeah. like they don't believe the system that, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. You got to you gotta eat your own lunch, right? Your, your own dog yeah. food. Mm -hmm. So um, one la what, what's the one last thing we want to leave everybody out there in, in uh, out there in the podcast land or whatever is picking us up right now on the, the old inter interweb, as, uh, as my, uh, my, my old guys would say, what would you like everybody else to know? about this business that's different than every other business. Richard Rawlings, by the way, that's who says it, inner <laughs> Richard, Richard Richard Rawlings, Rawlings. yeah. He's got, a, he's got a, a car flipping show. So it's really kind of syn syn synopsis with this. I think there's a stigma where people out there think, think that this is easy. Mm -hmm. I think there's a stigma out there that people think they don't have to spend money. They think, you know, what, there's no money down. Yeah. You can buy a house with no money down. Mm -hmm. And that, um, I, I don't know that that, I don't know that's a fair um, assessment of our business, mm -hmm. even though there's a lot of gurus out there saying that it's that easily, that mm -hmm. easy. Um, and I think, I think one important thing and we've touched on a lot today is, is if you're going to, if you're going to get through this, get through the cycles that we go through in real estate, and there's a lot of them, <clears throat> um, we've got to have, you've got to have multiple businesses. Mm -hmm. And you can't just focus on one one area, and because the market will determine which part of that business is is a good time to be, you know, uh, is a good time to be to be handling that. So, um, so I think you've got to be able, and you've got to know what different exit strategies. Each asset has a one reason why we've been safe over the last couple of years is we have learned multiple exit strategies. So when you look to buy a home, mm -hmm. invest in an asset. Um, it's how many exit strategies are there. If there's just one, we aren't buying it. Mm -hmm. We aren't buying it. We may try to wholesale it, but we aren't. We aren't taking it down. Mm -hmm. And so, because if you do get caught in a downturn and you rehab the home and it's just sitting there, you have to be able to figure out how to, you know, cover your costs on that yep. asset. Yep. And so, if you aren't doing that, then um, you'll be in trouble. Yeah, I think the thing I love about this business so much is that it's um, if you buy it right. Which I think is important, mm -hmm. right? And and uh, it's liquable, which means if you get in a situation where you know you've lost your job, you know we're we're, we're talking about someone who's you know got another profession outside the real estate mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. um, you can sell that property if you bought it right. You should at least be able to sell it mm -hmm. for what you what you got into it. Mm -hmm. um, 
or on the flip side, it's the thing like Dustin said, when you build it up, it's the thing that brings you three or four thousand dollars a month, possibly, mm -hmm. and that's what gets you through uh, a tough time, a transition, or allows you to to you know go on vacations and, and mm -hmm. it, it pays for your life, it pays mm -hmm. for your travel and, and your experiences in life, and so. I'm passionate, I'm really passionate about it because I think, and we preach it to our team too, is, um, you know, is it, it's just one more way to create a lifestyle that, mm -hmm. and when I say a lifestyle, we talk about freedom. Mm -hmm. What is, and whatever freedom means to you, for some people it's, it means, you know, it means something different for everybody. And then I think the last thing I'll leave is I think, you know, something we battle as just entrepreneurs in general is, and the thing that I kind of battle with and I think still do is, it's okay not to know your why. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's I think it's okay to let the why come to you a little bit and yep. not search so hard for it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you want you want to find something so bad because in real estate, there's unlike any other deal. There's a hundred podcasts. There's a hundred mm -hmm. different masterminds mm -hmm. now. There's developers. There's multifamily. There's mobile homes. There's there's a lot of things and directions you can go with, and you're always like, man, I want to go here. I want to go there. I want to do this. I want to do that. And and they're all good. Yeah. But um, I think just you know, I think, I think for everyone, just to kind of, you know, stick in your we, we, stick, I, in your lane, stick yeah. in your lane a little um, bit. The one thing that I think this industry is um, to kind of cap on what you guys are saying. I think the 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 ability the for the accessibility. That's really what I mean. For for you to get in at the level you want to get in at. That's it. And and for you to build on top of that, um, I think the the accessibility. It's such an accessible business. It's such an it's such a way that you can find a project. Even with you know, I'm working sixty hours a week. You find a project on the side, you know, start to build the portfolio mm -hmm. um, to 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 find um, you know an alternative income stream. So you can so you can you know spend more strategic time doing what you're doing day to day. I, I think that's that that for me is the the the, the thing that I, I want. I, I just want people to understand the access that they have to create abundance in a shorter amount of time than what I think they've been sold for the last, you know, mm. you know, last uh, since the industrial age. I mean, ever since we've got, you know, you know, pension plans and 401ks yeah. and, and and we've watched those things get, you know, disbanded and defunct and, you know, the re the returns cut in half, you know, people depending on that for their for where they were going to spend their retirement and i think also retirement the definition of it has changed i think one of the things you guys are you know really um uh, even illuminating me to it's like hey there is benefit to a lifestyle business the businesses that we have all that i've built over the years have all been very um, people driven process driven service oriented or we had to get everybody to believe in where we we're going and why we we're going there this business is really about helping people see that access and create that access in themselves too, right, with what they're, with what they're able to do. And, and I think that's why I see a lot of the people that work for you, work with you, work uh, by you, work beside you, are, are coming into the business and getting, and getting involved because it's accessible, because they see the, the returns, because they see that it's not passive, but if you work it and you work a system mm -hmm. and you've got a coach like you guys, you, you're able to get there and to start to see the thing built, mm -hmm. and that's really what what I think what what inspired me to push you know both you guys into to getting the message out, is because this is something that people need to hear. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. And I think you made a great point. You can the great thing about real estate is you can play at whatever level you want, mm -hmm. and if that means you're flipping one or two houses, or if that means you're flipping a hundred. Yep. You, it's it, you create it around your your lifestyle and what you're wanting, and and don't create your lifestyle around mm -hmm. your business, which For is sure. challenging. Mm -hmm. Which is challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks so much. It's been a good show. Thanks, Will. Yeah, Thank Will. You. Thanks yeah, for coming. Yeah.